today we're starting with the sociology of the family. This is lesson one and we're going to be looking at family and households. How are these two things differently defined? And then I'm going to ask you to be able to explain the different types of family structures that we find in society today. It's really important that you fast forward, rewind and pause this video as many times as you need to to make sure that you have all of the new information in your brain. Because when we get to the lesson, I'm going to be asking you to discuss and evaluate some of the potential advantages and disadvantages of different family structures. So while you're learning, you need to be thinking about what's great about this family structure and what are some of the challenges that these family structures might be facing. So straight in then, what is a family? Well, sociologists define a family as a group of two or more people who are related either by birth or by marriage or by adoption. Now it's really important that you remember to put adoption in there because if you are adopted you are legally a part of a family just as you would be if you were born into the family or married into the family. So don't forget to put adoption in there. And also just as a side note this can often come up as a four mark question in the exam so make sure that it's one of the key words that you know how to define. So what is a household then? Well, quite simply, a household is a group of people who are living together. Now, these groups may be related, they may be a family, so if you live together in a house as a family, you are also known as a household. But households can also be unrelated. Can you think of some examples of households where the people are not related at all? So pause the video for a few seconds and have a think. Okay. So, a few examples of households where the people are not related could be a student house where students all go to university and live together in the same household. Or, one day if you're working and you live in a house with a flatmate or a housemate, then that would also be considered a household, but you may not be related. A third example would be a household of children who don't have parents, but are not fostered or adopted, and they live together in a household looked after by carers. Now we on to the different types of family that you can find in society today. Remember, the society we live in is incredibly diverse and so it's important that you realise there are lots of different ways to do family. So our first type of family is the nuclear family. The nuclear family is your traditional family consisting of a mum, a dad and dependent children. So if you're thinking about a nuclear family, try and think about Family Guy or The Simpsons and they would be a perfect example of a nuclear family. Now traditionally the nuclear family would see the dad as the breadwinner, so he goes out to work, he makes money and he supports the family, while the mum stays at home to look after the children, do the housework and the washing. In modern society we still have nuclear families that consist of married or cohabiting couples with or without children. However today, in modern times, there is far less set gender roles. So the mum may work and the dad may look after the children and the gender roles are not as defined. Our second type of family is the extended family. The extended family consists of parents and children along with other family members. So for example, if you have grandparents who live with you, then you could say that your family is vertically extended. So there are three different generations all living together in the same family. If you have uncles and aunts that live with you, then your family is said to be horizontally extended. Extended families usually live together in the same house or they live very close to each other, for example, on the same street or in the same block of flats. Another point to remember is it's very easy to stay in touch with your extended family in modern times due to the internet and easy travel. So for example, I could quite easily jump on an aeroplane and go and see my sister in Germany or get in touch with my aunts and uncles in South Africa using Skype. A reconstituted family is a family that has come together because two divorced people have remarried so if the mum has children from a previous marriage and the new dad has children from a previous marriage, those children come together into what is a new reconstituted family. So that's where you see stepbrothers and stepsisters 
and sometimes half-brothers and half-sisters all living together as one big family. A really good example of a reconstituted family is Will Smith's family, where Will Smith has got his two children and then Jada Pinkett Smith has got her older son from a previous relationship. Another family that is increasing is the lone parent family. Lone parent families are families with one parent, so either a mum or a dad. Now lone parent families are becoming a lot more frequent because of three different reasons. Firstly, the divorce rate in the UK has risen over the last 50 years. Secondly, people choose not to marry the father or the mother of their children. Whereas in the past, if you were pregnant or if you had children, it was socially expected that you would be married to that person. The third reason why lone parent families may exist is because of the death of a partner. Now it's important to remember that studies show that for many parents, this is only a short phase in their lives before they marry or remarry. So lone parent families only rarely exist for five or so years in a lot of cases. Of course, there are cases where lone parent families exist for the entire childhood of the child. Next up, we've got same-sex families. Same-sex families are families that are headed by two parents of the same sex. Because of changes in the law, same-sex couples can now marry, they can adopt, they consider surrogacy and in vitro fertilisation. If you struggle with surrogacy or in vitro fertilisation, look it up and make sure you know what it means. Because of changes in the law and changes in society and how expected how acceptable it is to have a same-sex family, there are lots and lots of families that are now having children and having happy families. Our next type of family is called the empty nest family and the picture will help you remember exactly what this is. It's literally when children have grown up and left the home so they've either gone to university or they have left to live on their own or live with their own families. So the children have effectively flown the nest. The parents continue to live together in the family home and often live there until they're old. This is called an empty nest family. And finally, we have our beanpole family. The beanpole family is just a way of describing how much the family has changed over the last few years. In the past, say 60 years ago, families were much bigger with lots and lots of children. So the family tree was wide and bushy. Whereas today, in modern families, our family tree are tall, trees are tall and thin like a beanpole because we're having far less children. There are also older relatives in our family that are living for much longer, so our family tree continues to be quite skinny rather than full and bushy. OK, so to be ready for class, you need to know what is the definition of family, the definition of a household, and also the different types of family. Start to think about what are the advantages and the disadvantages of these different types of family. And to test yourself, do the quiz now.